Welcome to my shop. My name is Guy, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Creality CR10 SE 3D printer. So let's take a look at the specs of this machine real quick. This is a pretty standard build size. It's a 220 by 220 on the X and Y, and actually has a 265 build height. Now this is a direct drive printer. It uses their Sprite hot end. I should mention that this is an all metal hot end, and it also comes with a hardened steel nozzle, which is really nice. So it can use some abrasive materials right out of the box. Now this is from the Creality's newest line of printers. And it's kind of cool because there's no wheels underneath here to adjust the bed. It does everything automatically. It levels the bed automatically and adjusts for Z height automatically. It uses a load cell on the one side. And of course, it's got a BL touch or excuse me, a CR touch automatic bed leveling system. Another thing Crowley has done with this printer that's really nice, on the X and the Y, they're using linear rails. So it's very, very smooth. The wheels aren't really usually a problem. Uh, however, these are just going to last longer, require less maintenance. And for overall, it just has a stiffer feel to it. Let me spin this around real quick. Now this does have dual Z motors on it, dual rods, and they're connected by a belt up on top. And up on top, it does have a filament runout sensor included, and it does have an LED light bar with a separate switch, which I kind of like. You don't have to go through the software to turn it on and off. Let's take a look underneath the hood of this extruder. There's just three screws holds it on. Now there's a 4020 fan for parts cooling on the inside here. There's another very small fan <clears throat> around the other side here for the hot end. Here's your CR touch. And there is a breakout board on this that goes back to the motherboard. So everything is plugged in up here. Now this also appears to be using the same hot end that the Creality K1 uses. So there's a ceramic heater in there which heats up really quick and that's pretty cool. Now on the other side here we do have a breakout board. Um, everything is plugged into there so if you need to do repairs you can do it right here. You don't have to go all the way back to the motherboard. This is the wire coming from the, the motherboard and it appears to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wires that goes back to the motherboard. I've got the printer on its back and I've taken off the bottom cover. There is a 350 watt power supply in here. Here's the motherboard. There's also a little daughter board here. I really don't know what it is. It's marked RS-232, which is a communication protocol comes out of here into there, and then that is what's feeding the, the board on the head itself. Let's take a closer look at this motherboard. One of the first things I noticed on this motherboard is that there's three heat sinks. So what that's telling me is that the two Z motors do not act independently of one another. You've got X, Y, and Z. So uh, one of these days I'd like to see somebody that actually has a Z motors that act independently of one another. This is the cable that goes over to the display and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, not a whole heck of a lot going on. Everything is pretty standard. Um, that's the bed thermistor. So everything is done through communications to the, to the hot end. A couple other quick things. This does include a PEI sheet, which is really nice inside of that black polycarbonate thing they've been putting on lately. It has a drawer in the front to hold all the tools. And there's no USB ports on the front. They're actually on the side of the display, and there's two of them. Let's turn the machine on. I don't know if you can hear those fans. That's just the power supply fan. It's, it's a little loud, but it's going through the boot up sequence. Again, this is running Clipper. It's actually not running Clipper. It's a kind of Clipper that Crowley calls the Crowley OS. Um, this is the same software that they put on their K1. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my language, which is English. And then I have to accept the uh, EULA. What's asking me next 
is to do the Wi-Fi. This does have Wi-Fi built into it. Select my time zone. And it's asking me if I want to bind to the Creality Cloud. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to skip that. Now it's telling me that it's going to go through its setup process and its self-check. So let me start that. First thing it's doing is heating up the nozzle. After the nozzle's been preheated, it's going to go ahead and preheat the bed. Okay, the nozzle's been preheated, and so now it's going to go through its automatic bed leveling. So it homed. Now it's going through and it's hitting the load cell on the side of the bed there, and it's determining what the Z offset is. And that's the distance from the automatic bed leveling to the nozzle itself to get you that perfect first layer. Speaking of perfect first layer, I do have a podcast for 3D printing now, and it's with Nathan Builds Robots from the Nathan Builds Robots channel and JJ Shankles. So I'll leave a link in the description below and you can check it out. So it's finishing up the routine for the uh, Z offset. And I think after this, it's gonna go through and do the bed leveling itself. It's going through the auto bed leveling right now, creating a mesh, and it's hitting 49 points, which is quite a few. So it's going to take a minute. It's finished up its bed leveling. It's going to double check its Z level again. Now it's going to start its input shaping. What it's doing is the head is moving back and forth very quickly, and that's going to create a frequency, and then it's going to find that frequency and then send something back to cancel it later. That'll help the ringing. This is a pretty standard thing on clipper machines. It's one of the biggest advantages of clipper. Well, the self-check is complete. It took about 15 minutes. I'm going to hit OK. And here's the screen. Again, this looks just like the K1, except it's in a portrait orientation instead of landscape. So that was it for the configuration. It's completely set up, ready to go now. Uh, very easy. I don't have to really mess with anything. Everything is automatic. Let's get some uh, filament loaded in this. and put it through the filament runout sensor and bring it down. I'm just going to push this lever in and just feed the filament in until it hits bottom. So now I'm going to go over to this menu here and I'm going to click extrude and I've got nozzle temperature at 240. It's the length of 5 millimeters. I'm going to extrude more than that. say 20 millimeters. I'm going to hit extrude and it's going to heat up the nozzle and then extrude the filament. So the nozzle is heated up and it's extruding. All is good. Now that I have filament loaded, I'm going to go ahead and print some. I'm going to take the USB stick that came with it. It says it was inserted. I have the little folder there for the files. There's local, USB drive, and history, so I want to find out what's in the USB drive. I've got a benchy, a filament guide, and a scraper. The benchy says 14 minutes. That's pretty darn fast. So I have a choice. I can calibrate it before the, the print goes. I'm going to turn that off for now because I just calibrated it, and then hit print. It's going to purge a line of filament, and then it should start going. Wow, that's fast. Jeez Louise. That is not sped up. That is its actual speed. It is really moving. I did look in the slicer and the profile for this, the exact same speed as the K1. So it's claiming 600 millimeters per second at 8,000 millimeters cubed. Uh, I doubt if it's going to go that fast. It's going to be between 150 and 250 millimeters per second, which is super, super fast. 
Touchdowns. And now Rivers takes it inside the 35 yard line of the Colts. Well, the file said 14 minutes. Let's see how long it actually took. Hit the history 20 minutes. 20 minutes is still pretty damn fast for a benchy. Let's get that off of there. All right, let's take a closer look at it. I get it just right in the light. You can see where it doesn't have a perfectly smooth surface, but there's still real nice layer lines. It's a little bit here where it could use some more cooling. The overhangs are very good. It's very flat here. Overall, this is an acceptable bench. I wouldn't call it super fantastic print quality, but it's, it's not bad. I've seen worse but I, I have seen better. I printed out what was left on the uh, SD card. One of the things was this filament guide. I said the print quality is acceptable, but I would not call it exceptional by any stretch of the imagination. But it's good considering the speed and it's a bed slinger. I think that if I slowed it down a little bit, it would work much better. Now this is a scraper. This also came on the USB drive with the machine. Now this is something I sliced myself using the Creality Slicer and their uh, default profile for PLA on this. This is a a little lidded box. I wanted to test to see how that would look there, or how that would work. And also, this gives me a really good idea of the Z banding on it. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's some definite Z banding on this. I also printed out this garbage can. Uh, this was in vase mode, and this came out really nice. The layer line's real tight. There's no under extrusion anywhere. There's no over extrusion. There's no little zits everywhere. So this came out pretty nice. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. This has me a little concerned, though. I'm, I'm just wondering if I can tune that out somehow. So let's talk about the things I really like about this machine. First of all, I love that it has clipper. It's not fully open source, but I'm sure Creality will open it up sooner or later. I like all the features it has. It ticks off every single feature you could want on a bed slinger. It has clipper, direct drive, dual Z, filament run out. It also has the linear guides or the linear rails, which I think is a pretty big deal. It comes with a really nice PEI plate, uh, touch screen display, fully featured. It, it has a lot going for it. The only thing that I question on this is what is the market for this machine? This machine right now at time of filming runs around $390 to $420. Uh, the only thing I can really think of is that this is trying to do competition with the anchor make. It was it the M5C, I think, uh, which is about $400. <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense. I think where this machine could really shine is in a print farm. Um, it appears that it's going to be very durable. The software, the Creality Print, allows you to have mul or view multiple printers at the same time in their, on, their, on their page, so that's nice. Um, but again, I, I just question the price of it and the features, considering, you know, we, I just reviewed the Creality V3 SE, which was a great printer. And, but it was only $200. This is twice the price. I guess the question I'm asking myself is this machine worth twice, twice the price? To me, I'm going to say no, but for some, it may. And I think durability-wise and maintenance-wise, this is going to be a lot less than something like a beginner machine like the SE or V3 SE machine. Um, so anyways, those are my thoughts on it. 
And uh, I know people will think I'm crazy, and if you do, just leave a comment down below how crazy you think I am. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll, we'll see you next time.